Hey everybody, Home Slice Henry here, and in today's video, we're checking out quite possibly the biggest flex ever seen in the Open Master League, and that is a level 50 Shadow Shundo Mewtwo. These battles were submitted to channel by a member of the community, Gremlin Ninja, so many thanks for the battle submission. And paired up with the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo is a level 50 Zarude, which is one heck of a grind, and also a very cool core breaker at the moment, and on the lead is Landorus. So without further ado, let's hop into the matches, and let's check out the team in action in the Open Master League. Hopping to the first match, picking up a terrible lead, Theory Landorus into Kyogre. Immediate safe switch into the Shadow Shiny Mewtwo. Opponent staying in here with the Kyogre. They try and go for a side strike catch onto their own Mewtwo, and they're going to pay for that decision. Shadow Ball will be shielded up by the opponent, but the opponent is so far behind in terms of energy that they now have no way of making a play for switch. Shadow Mewtwo farming up, going for the Shadow Ball. This Shadow Ball will easily pick up the one-hit KO onto the opponent, so they're forced to burn the final shield. They're firing off another side strike, but that's not going to be a problem. There's still a shield remaining. Switch Clock not yet up for the opponent, choosing to overfarm, and because this Mewtwo is best buddied, playing to the CMP tie, and Shadow Ball picks up the knockout. Opponent can send back in Kyogre, but Kyogre will be hit with a Psy Strike if they do, and this is going to do so much damage. This is a Shadow Mewtwo. The Psy Strike gets them low in the back. It's Dialga and a quick switch into the Landorus. The Landorus, due to a fairly fast switch, is going to be able to outpace here, make it to the Sandseer Storm, and that just does massive damage. The opponent cannot knock out with an Iron Head here. They have to full send the Draco Meteor, and they do. That's going to be good by to the Landorus, but now in comes Zarude. Zarude going for the Dark Pulse. This is going to pick up the KO onto Dialga, and all the opponent has left is the Kyogre. Kyogre wants absolutely nothing to do with Zarude, and that is a good game. Moving into the next match, leading Theory and Landorus into Dialga. This time picking up a very good lead. Opponent is going to save switch into their own shiny Mewtwo, but they had to purify it. They did not have the flex of the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo. But Zarude, I mean, Zarude just crushes Mewtwo unless Mewtwo has Focus Blast. Mewtwo baits with the Psy Strike, so they could still have the Focus Blast here, but they're firing off energy, and that is not enough for a Focus Blast. They're running double Legacy, so they are completely walled by the Zarude. Zarude farming up, going for the Dark Pulse. Dark Pulse into the Mewtwo is going to be double shielded, so the opponent trying to make a play for Switch, but that's not going to work out. I really don't like the play here by the opponent to double shield as you just can't win switch unless you're running something like Ice Beam or the Focus Blast. We're now going to see a pivot into the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo. Just, you know, saving the Zarude for later in case it is going to be useful, potentially reading a Kyogre in the back. The Iron Head is going to pick up the knockout, waiting the clock, and then my guess is you could just send in the Landorus. In comes the Landorus. That's not a Kyogre, but it is a water type. It's a Palkia in the back. Palkia will be met with the Sandseer Storm. That does quite a lot of damage. Palkia known for its damage output, not necessarily known for its bulk. Landorus going to let the Aqua Tail go. Landorus going for another Sandseer Storm. This Sandseer Storm will come very close to knocking out, and then you can just send in Zarude. Zarude gets the Vine Whip farm down. Back in comes the Dialga, and Dialga is now going to be met with the Dark Pulse. The Vine Whip's, of course, double resistant, so basically no fast move pressure available, but the Dark Pulse plus one more Vine Whip is enough to secure the victory. Moving into the next match, leading Landorus into another Dialga. Back-to-back -back Dialga leads is very nice to see. Opponent save switches into the Landorus, and that's going to be answered with the Sarud. Grass types honestly feel like they're having a bit of a resurgence at the moment with the fact that Landorus is so prevalent. And Landorus, due to the fact that its best charge attack, Sansir Storm, is ground, is not a massive fan of going up against grass types. We're going to see the Grass Knot connect. That does quite a lot of damage onto the Landorus. Landorus going to bait with the Sandseer Storm, and they're just getting farmed down by the Zarude. Back in comes the Dialga. Zarude is going to be firing off a debuff Dark Pulse, so this won't do a ton of damage. Zarude, ooh, saving the Zarude for later, and a pivot into the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo. Again, I am insanely jealous. What a flex. Going for the Psy Strike. That does big damage to the Dialga. Dialga returning fire with the Iron Head. Mewtwo deciding to commit a shield here. 
and the opponent is staying in this matchup, understanding that Psycho Cuts do not do a lot of damage. Mewtwo will be able to pick up the knockout with the side strike unless the opponent decides to shield. They let it go. In the back, they have, oh, this could get difficult, Hisuian Avalug in the back, and this team is pretty weak to Hisuian Avalug. Avalug is going to get a full farm down. Zarud does have a little bit of energy, but not a lot. In comes the Landorus. This is double super effective Icy Wind, so we will see the shield. Landorus able to make it to the Sandseer Storm, so at the very least, this damage from the Avalug is going to be debuffed by one stage. And that does quite a lot of damage. The farm up, the attempt at the catch. The catch is unsuccessful. However, we do see the Power Whip reached. The Power Whip is going to force the shield. Zarud, unfortunately, not getting the farm down. And we do see the game resigned. Moving into the next match, leading Theria Landorus into Zygarde. Zygarde, the absolute scourge of the Master League, going up against the Landorus. Landorus does have quite a bit of play here. Up one Mudshot, it does beat Zygarde in all even shielding situations. Now, if it is at even energy, it can definitely depend on whether the opponent gets crunch debuffs. We do see the crunch shielded up first, firing off the Sandseer Storm. Sandseer Storm, of course, you don't have to worry about any guessing games when it comes to a debuff. The debuff chance is 100%. So now this Zygarde is very heavily debuffed. They can fire off the crunch, but this is going to do basically no damage. The crunch is going to connect, and we do not see a debuff. That's quite nice for the Landorus. Landorus going for another Sandseer Storm. This will pick up the knockout unless the opponent shields. They're shielding up the Zygarde. Zygarde firing off another crunch. Honestly, this may not KO. This will be close. It doesn't KO, but the Zygarde does get the farm down. In comes Zarud. Zarud is a complete wall to energy from the Zygarde. So Zarud will be able to get a nice energy head start. So even if the opponent has something like a Solgaleo in the back, Solgaleo is not going to be a big fan of Dark Pulse. In comes Kiram. Kiram hit with the Dark Pulse. We now see the switch into the Shadow Shunda Mewtwo. Mewtwo just barely getting outpaced here as the opponent makes it to the Glaciate. Glaciate, of course, would do a ton of damage to Shadow Mewtwo, so we will see the shield. Mewtwo is a back-to-back, -back, so the opponent's not going to shield here. Oh, they do shield! A mistake from the opponent! As the Kiram, you really cannot afford to shield there as you just get no use out of the shield. You just get immediately KO'd by the Psy Strike, and now you're in a shields down situation. Opponent sends in the Zygarde. It does not make it to a move, and in the back, there it is right on cue, the Soul Galeo. Soul Galeo would love to have a shield right about now as the Shadow Ball connects. In comes the Zarud. Zarud making it to the Dark Pulse, and this is not enough for a Flamethrower. At worst, it's an Iron Head. Iron Head will not KO. And the infamous dreaded Zygarde Solgaleo core is going to get KO'd by Zarud. Moving to the next match, leading Landorus once again into another Dialga. And this Dialga is staying in. If they're staying in, there's got to be usefulness for this Landorus somewhere in the back. Landorus goes for the Sands. Your opponent is going to no shield that. Landorus does win the zero shield here. But considering they're staying into a losing matchup, it's probably worth going for the one shield farm down play. Landorus is going to look for the farm down exiting with so much energy. Opponent sends in the Palkia. The Palkia is going to have to deal with the Landorus that is already at two Sandseer Storms. Sandseer Storm number one is going to connect, throwing one more mud shot and going for Sandseer Storm number two. This will get the Palkia quite low. Palkia is going to let that through. Landorus just cannot make it. In comes Zarud and the opponent is going to send out their final Pokemon, which is revealed to be Landorus. Things are honestly looking pretty good here. The opponent does have the shield advantage, but this is a very miserable matchup for the Landorus. Landorus can go for the Stone Edge. We're going to see a very confident no shield from the Zarud as the Stone Edge will connect. Firing off another Power Whip, continuing to apply pressure to this Landorus. Landorus is going to double shield, and now in comes the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo. Mewtwo is going to no shield as the opponent fires off the Sand Seer Storm, going for the Side Strike, winning charge attack priority, and that's going to be goodbye to that Landorus. They have Palkia in the back. It has energy, but it doesn't have health. And the Palkia can fire off an Aqua Tail to pick up the knockout, but they just do not have the energy needed to make it to a Draco Meteor, and Zarud is going to get that farm down. Moving to the next match. Oh man, the Zygarde returns, leading Landorus into Zygarde. Landorus is going to strike first, going for the Sandseer Storm, making sure to throw on good charge attack timing, but going for the Sandseer Storm as soon as he possibly can. The opponent does not have good charge attack timing. They throw the crunch as soon as they get it. Unfortunately, they do get the defense drop. That's extremely unfortunate to see. 
firing off another Sandseer Storm. Opponent now going to be below half HP. Landorus is playing to charge attack priority here, understanding that this opponent is not playing with good charge attack timing. They're just throwing as soon as they get it. So that's being able to read the opponent's tendencies and take advantage of them. The Crunch is going to connect. This one finally does not get the debuff. Landorus, very low on HP, able to make it to one final Sandseer Storm. The Sandseer Storm will be shielded. Opponent gets the farm down, but they're heavily debuffed, and this just sets up Zarud to get a massive amount of farm. This is exactly the same way that that first lead played out. The opponent has Outrage. I have never seen a more sad-looking Outrage in my entire life. That was absolutely hilarious damage. Opponent is going to make it to one final charge attack. It is just going to be the Crunch as they get farmed down. They send in Xerneas. Xerneas, not going to be a big fan of these Power Whips. The Power Whip is going to connect. Zarud already at another Power Whip, applying so much pressure onto the deer. Xerneas is going to shield. We now see the switch into the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo, which is going to be answered with Kyogre. But Kyogre is about to have a really bad day here. The opponent let Mewtwo get too much of an energy head start. Mewtwo is going to be able to shield and just build up to the back-to-back -back side strikes. And this is just game over. The opponent does not not have a win con building up to one before the back-to-back -back, just understanding that the zern doesn't have a move so you can very safely throw your psycho cut and that is a shadow shundo mewtwo sweeping the end game and taking the win Moving into the next match, leading Therian Landorus into Hisui and Avalog. This is going to be a tough match for sure. Staying in here with the Landorus to start. Landorus is going to go for the Sandseer Storm. This does do about half of the HP of the Avalog. So Avalog is going to commit the shield. And we see a switch into the Shadow Shunda Mewtwo to catch the Icy Wind. Opponent now going to send in Lugia. I mean, even with the fact that the Shadow Ball is debuffed, this is still a Shadow Shadow Ball from a Mewtwo. This is going to hurt. The Shadow Ball connects. It's still going to be enough to two-shot. Oh my goodness. Shadow Shundo Mewtwo. Mewtwo is going to be shielding up the Sky Attack and then looking to go for the Shadow Ball. This will pick up the knockout. The opponent has a choice to make. They elect to protect the Lugia. I think Lugia is going to have to throw here because if they don't, they're just getting knocked out by the Shadow Ball. So the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo able to flip switch despite the fact that it was debuffed. In comes the Avalug to get farmed. Avalog now going to be met with Zarud. Zarud, of course, can hit for a super effective damage with the Power Whip, but that's going to be debuffed by an Icy Wind. The Icy Wind is shielded in the back. It's Palkia, and honestly, even though you don't necessarily want to, you kind of have to switch there because the Zarud is debuffed. The energy is not going to be efficiently used. So unfortunately, the Landorus will get knocked out. Back in comes the Zarud. Zarud firing off the Power Whip. Power Whip is going to connect, dealing quite a lot of damage. Zarud is going to look to farm up. The opponent does not have enough energy for a Draco Meteor here. This should just be the Aqua Tail. And with that, Zarud should be able to farm up enough energy to make it to a Power Whip versus the Palkia and a Power Whip versus the Avalog. It's going to be close, but the Zarud able to hang on here, make it to the Power Whip. KO the Snowplow Hisuian Avalog and take that win. Hopping into the final match, leading Therian Landorus, what do you know, once again into a Dialga. The Dialga, as previous ones have, is choosing to stay in here. Landorus choosing to farm up energy, and Landorus is going to be going for a Sandseer Storm bait and gets the shield from the opponent. Oh man, that is brutal for the opponent. Oh my goodness. They're going to go for the Stone Edge. That does not do a whole lot of damage. We're going to see continuing to farm up here. Unfortunately, it is going to be a lost charge attack priority as the opponent chooses to go for the Sandseer Storm. Sandseer Storm, of course, will come with the debuff. Sarud going for an undercharge, but unfortunately with the debuff, it does end up being too much of an undercharge. Opponent just going straight Sandseer Storm here. So the Zarud is not very threatened by this matchup. And we're going to see Zarud just opt to zero bubble the Power Whip and look for any possible farm. And we'll get one extra Vine Whip. In comes Dialga. We now see a pivot into the Shadow Shundo Mewtwo as the opponent fires off their energy. This Iron Head will be shielded. Mewtwo wanting to preserve HP as Dragon Breath is extremely threatening. Going for the Shadow Shadow Ball. This is going to hurt. The Shadow Ball connects. Getting Dialga deep into the red. Can Dialga make it to one final charge attack? Yes, it can. Only one shield left for the Mewtwo. It's not going to use it here. Down goes Mewtwo. It's all up to the low health Zarud and the Landorus to take home the victory. In comes the Landorus, but it's a Kyogre in the back. Oh, this, this is looking tough. 
going to fire off the Sandseer Storm, the Switch into the Zarud, Zarud going for the Power Whip. The question is, can the opponent waterfall down the Zarud? The Zarud is very low. Zarud continuing to farm. The opponent cannot farm down. The bulk of the level 50 Zarud picking up the knockout. All that's left in the back is one HP of Dialga, and Therian Landorus is going to secure the victory. All in all, this is a team filled with massive flexes. The fact that this trainer not only has a Shadow Shundo Mewtwo, as well as having a Hundo Zeru, just unbelievable RNG. So, I mean, all I can say is, I am quite jealous. What an amazing Master League roster, and they were able to put it to good use as well. That Shadow Shundo Mewtwo is just terrifying when it has an energy advantage, and Zarud is so good at shutting down a lot of those common save switches like the Therian Landorus. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're enjoying the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And a special thank you as always to our members here on YouTube. The support you guys provide is sincerely appreciated. So thank you guys oh so very much. And until next time, I've been Home Slice Henry.